My brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening. Would like to start, so could we invite those standing to take a seat, please?
my brothers and my sisters, we gather in this sanctuary here at St. Gabriel's Episcopal Church this night to say thank you, God, for the life, the ministry, and witness of our brother in Christ, Wilbert Weston Joseph. He has been known to us in various capacities and certainly as we celebrate his life this night we pray for those who mourn his death especially his wife Joan that she along with other members of his family will indeed be comforted by God the Holy Spirit and the love and the support of other members of the family and of their friends. As we begin this celebration, I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother, Wilbert. We thank you for giving him to us as family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As the bulletin you were given when you came in uh, indicates we are going to be opening the microphone we would say and invite those among us who would like to come forward and to express greetings, regards, sentiments uh, to Wilbert's family and certainly in his memory to do so at this time. And so for those of us who are prepared to do so, could you come forward? We ask that you maintain the two minutes guideline. Um, then we're gonna be having the poem by his niece, Denise, and then Vernon, his brother, will read the eulogy. Wilbert demonstrated the big brother role effectively and affectionately, and it came with overprotection of his sisters. One sister recalled that when she had a casual outing, Wilbert would drill her with questions like, where are you going, who are you going with, and when are you coming back, which would lead to, okay, I will drop you off and pick you up. That was his prerogative as a big brother. On the other hand, Wilbert's younger brother remembered going to the store for him, picking up his dry cleaning and washing and shining his bike, just to give a few. He probably got to take a spin on that bike that he made look like new and a penny or two as compensation. And that's how big brothers relate with younger brothers. The relationship between Wilbert and his siblings 
was strong and influential, which characterized care, support, and mutual respect. No harm done. Wilbert and his brothers enjoyed growing up together in their younger years, especially the two that were close in age to him, Julian, who is now deceased, and Morton Sr., who wasn't well enough to attend today. They hung out together, enjoyed a few parties with the hopes of attracting the ladies. They did it all. Wilbert did not have to protect them in that respect. They all did okay on their own. Wilbert and I really never really grew up as such. He was already grown up, so he got married and started a new life when I was just six years old. As I continued to grow up, I remembered going to Wilbert's workplace at Atkinson Airport to visit with him, and it continued at the Tamari Airport, as it was later called, back in Guyana, with lots more visits when possible. I had fun helping him out behind the counter of the cafeteria where he took pride serving the customers. He was the boss. That was our time together again. Spending time with him at his home was also fun. It was time well spent together. I believe Wilbur did it all because he wanted to. He probably wanted to show me off. I can't really remember how long the visits went on for, but those times I enjoyed as a child, which I will hold dear to my heart. I was 12 years old when Wilbert left for the US, and four years later, I left for Canada. Our relationship was now long distance, but we still enjoyed, we still stayed connected through some of his visits to Canada in the earlier years, and more so the last few years via phone. But here's the thing, this person who I'm called Bobo, I don't know how I call him Bobo, but I did. You probably guessed it by now. It's my big brother, the true sense of the word big. And I'm his baby sister, the last of 13 siblings. Yes, we are a big blessed family. Whenever Wilbur and I talked on the phone, he would call me baby. It was just about a few weeks before his brief illness we were talking and the conversation was the same as always. He calling me baby. I would tell myself that I'm all grown up now, but it felt great to be his baby sister and to hear that word. To him, I will always be the baby. I remember the impact Wilbert had on my life as a brother. Thank you, big brother, for being so loving and protective as you were. I will miss hearing your voice and that word baby and much more. I loved you all your life and I will miss you for the rest of mine. So Wilbert, on behalf of your siblings present, your brother Morton, AKA Dingy, who couldn't be here, your many nieces and nephews, aunt, uncle, and brothers and sisters-in-law, we thank God for giving us the privilege to share our lives with you and you with us. A well-blessed 88 years you have lived. You will always be in our hearts. And to Auntie Joan, from the entire Joseph family, we say thank you for accompanying Wilbert on his long life's journey. God bless you. For now we are saying, so long, sleep well, until we meet again. Love you always and forever, big brother. I was asked by Uncle Dingy, so Morton Sr., to read his sentiments as he couldn't be here. Born December 4th, 1935. Departed March 16th, 2024. He was the eldest son of Eric and Marie Joseph, deceased who at the time resided in Georgetown, Guyana. Wilbert was a well-known figure, beloved for his unshakable integrity and immeasurable love he held for his wife, Joan, and those around him, including his siblings. Wilbert's journey was marked by his unwavering commitment to his values and to the profound connection he nurtured through his life. Wilbert's life was a testament to the strength he found in faith and enduring power of love. My brother and I were very close. 
We would call each other from time to time and crying about our health. I will miss that. Whenever I visited Brooklyn, I would visit him and spend some time. I will miss that. Then I would visit Eddie's place on Utica to hang out with other siblings and friends. He would be there. I will miss that. We would sit on his veranda and talk about old times, laughing and remembering the good times. I will miss that. So many other good things we once shared I would like to talk about, but they're too numerous. Wilbert, this phenomenal fellow, was an exceptional individual and human being, a man's man. His life rested on fr family, friendship, and work. This was his trinity. Throughout his life, he was disciplined what love was all about. Nothing too much or too little for him to do for us. All his material possessions were earned since work was one of his centerpieces of life. So my brother, journey on. You have left this world for a better place. You have gone in body, but your spirit will always be with us. Rest in peace. Before I conclude, I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the rest of the family who could not make it there today to thank you all who have shared with us in this time of mourning. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts, your brother Morton. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Joan Joseph's niece, and this is my niece, Isabella. We have a poem for Uncle Wilbert. Our dearest Uncle Wilbert, most, more than just an uncle, you were. A loving presence as we all adored. Not just our mother's brother-in-law, but a man whose warmth we deeply saw. Part of our family, long before our birth, you brought such laughter and joy to earth. A brother to our mother from youth, your kindness and care were simple truth. When we visit you in New York, your home, you made it even, you made it an event. We never fell alone, and we, when you come to Florida, sunshine, we love to take you out and have a sunshine fun. No matter what, you'd, you'd make us feel loved. A kindness from the heavens above. Tennis rolls and treats we couldn't find. My, in Miami then, such memories wind. You had the best stories to delight, capti captivating us with Diana mites, gather around in sheer lifelight. Your table would fill our souls with light. Your smile could brighten the darkest day. Cares and worries just melted away. The mayor of Cordillo Road, they'd say, bringing friendship everywhere, come what may. You loved your wife with all your heart, and all us kids too. You played your part, treated us like your very own, a bond of family fully grown. The lottery tickets you'd gladly share, spreading your wealth without a care. Always ready for fun and a thrill. Your spirit and joy rem we remember still. Those reggae tunes on Saturday morn, drifting up our souls we, we are re reborn. Evening walks you stay, Raja, to understand. Nightly sweet with dear Auntie Joni, no doubt of that. Stupidy, you read Mark at Folly, but brought more laughter than melancholy. Though you were robbed of your carefree ways, you powered through the darkest of days. Now here we gather in a place you'd had chuckled at, that serious place. 
church was never your favorite stop, but, it, but it's where we celebrate your nonstop. Laughter, love, that bright shining soul. In our hearts, you'll always have a role. More than just an uncle, truly family. Beloved Wilbert, eternally. We love you, Uncle Wilbert. Vernon. Good evening. I'm here to read the obituary, not actually the eulogy. Um, but let me thank on behalf of the rest of the family, let me thank each and every one of you being here as we celebrate a full and rich life of my brother. This for me was unexpected. I spoke to Wilbert, as I usually do, I would call him for his birthdays, December 4th. I was leaving the country and I would not have been around for his birthday, so I called him a few days ahead of time. And he reminded me about our, our birthdays, myself and my wife, because we were born on the same day. And we, ex we exchanged pleasantries, and I let, told him I'm gonna, I'm gonna see him later, which in my mind, I know I was gonna come back to New York in February, and I was gonna use that opportunity to see him. When I came back in from our trip, it was Friday, and we had planned to visit him the next day, the Saturday, because I was leaving to go back home the following Tuesday. Um, Saturday morning, as we were preparing to come to New York, my brother called me and told me that Wilbert was in hospital. So instead of going to his home to see my brother healthy, I went to the hospital and saw him struggling for his life. You know, there were many wonderful aspects of his life and many ways he has touched our lives. I will always remember him as a wonderful brother, a loving and devoted husband to his wife, Joan, a good friend, and a generous uncle to his nieces and nephews. So, as I encourage you to share today, tomorrow, and for years, years to come, share your memories and stories about him. In this way, we will keep the gift of his life alive. 
So I know he has fought a good fight. And he has finished the course. And he continued to keep the faith. Farewell, my brother. Thank you for indulging me. Now let me do what I was called upon to do. Wilbert Weston Joseph was born December 4, 1935 in Georgetown, Guyana, South America, to the late Eric and Marie Joseph. Sadly, Wilbert was called home peacefully to his heavenly father on March 16, 2024, after a very short illness. Wilbert achieved his education at St. Philip's Elementary School and St. Philip's High School. He was interested in accounting, so he took a course to see if this was something he wanted to do. His first experience with employment came at Booker's store as a photography technician. Then he went on to Wagon Wheel as a, bar, as a bartender, where he met and married his wife, Joan, for 58 years. Wilbur, Wilbert went on to work at Atkinson International Airport, later known as Timeri International Airport, as manager of the cafeteria, which included bartending. His employment in Guyana was at the Ministry of Works and Hydraulics before immigrating to the United States to join his wife, Joan, in 1972. Soon after entry into the USA, Wilbert gained his employment as a clerk at the well-known Wall Street investment firm, Merrill Lynch and Company, where he worked for 27 years until his retirement at age 64. This was his opportunity to travel even more since he and his wife Joan always did. He ventured back and forth many times, also making visits to Canada where his, where his late mom and dad and a few other siblings live. He was present for several events including weddings, birthdays, celebration for his parents and coming up north to visit whenever he can. His traveling adventures also included several cruises with his wife, Joan. Wilbert also enjoyed the social side of his life, which included a few parties now and then, according to his wife, Joan. Wilbert loved dancing, and he did as he did when he was younger. They were both making friends, exploring the American lifestyle as new immigrants and just having some fun. Wilbert loved to play dominoes whenever he went to his brother's Cedric printing establishment in the earlier years in Brooklyn. Before Cedric moved to Florida, he would continue this tradition with his youngest brother, Edwin, at the same printing establishment. That's where he would line with others and his late brother Julian. They were close. He also enjoyed sports, cricket, soccer, boxing, etc. Wilbert kept up with staying fit as well. If he had to walk somewhere not far, he did. There's times when I remember him, seeing him walking down Utica Avenue on Saturdays coming to hang out at Eddie's printing establishment. He would hang there for a few hours. Then he was getting ready to go. He would say his goodbyes. I would ask him, don't you want me to give you a ride home? He said, no, man, I walk. And I would just stand there and see him disappear into the street. Wilbert was a devoted husband, brother, uncle, nephew, and a good friend, a humble, generous, and caring human being. Wilbert will forever be missed in our hearts. Wilbert is survived by his loving wife, Joan. He has a brother. He, he 
He was the brother of Norma Morris and big brother Julian, Yvette McAllister, Colin, all four now deceased, Morton Sr., Claudette Williams, Hubert, Cedric Vernon, Edwin, Tessa Oliver, and Annette Benjamin. He is also survived by many nieces and nephews, sisters and brothers-in-law, and an aunt and an uncle. Wilbert leaves to mourn a host of other relatives and friends, lovingly submitted to family. Thank you. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Wilbert for burial. Let us pray with confidence to God, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. Let us pray. Deliver your servant Wilbert, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set him free from every bond that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us also pray for those who mourn, that they may cast their care on God and know the consolation of God's love. Almighty God, Look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom we pray. Remember them, Lord, in your mercy. Nourish them with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. He bless Wilbert's casket with holy water. Remind us all of his baptism in God, in Jesus Christ. I am resurrection, and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. 
after my awakening he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God I myself shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. The hymn, It Is Well With My Soul.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Wilbert, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the readings. Good evening. I'm Robin Nublet Fanfair. I'm Joan Joseph and Wilbur Joseph's niece. The reading today will be from Psalm 91, verse 1 through 16. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll be reading from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good evening. I am Russell Neblett, nephew to Joan and Wilbert Joseph, and I'll be completing a reading from the book of the Revelation, chapter 21, verse 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, 
See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to begin this evening by once again expressing to Joan and by extension to Wilbert's siblings, to other members of their family the love and the support of this congregation and to express also 
our deepest sympathies and condolences as you mourn his death. I am fully aware of how painful these proceedings are, especially, again, for Joan and for his siblings. But we want to assure you of our love and our prayers as you go through this difficult time. As I believe his brother Vernon indicated earlier, certainly one of the ways to remember Wilbert, and I often say this to folks as I encounter them at times like these, is to take the time to talk about him. Whatever gathering you have as family and friends, and if the gathering is back on Utica Avenue, take the time to talk about him. Bring to the forefront of your minds and certainly in your hearts the good times that you spent with him. And as I've spoken to her and listened to those who spoke of him this night, we can speak of his generosity of spirit, especially as it relates to his family. And we thank God for that. We can speak of his love for his family and especially his wife, his devotion to both, and as we lift those things to Almighty God, his memory will live on in our expressions of love and of fellowship. And so we take time this night to give God thanks for Wilbert's life, ministry, and witness for the many ways in which she has impacted our lives and we commend his soul to the care and the keeping of Almighty God. Certainly one of the challenges that I have in a setting like this is to get you to switch your focus for a moment. To switch it from a focus on death and to center it in God, in whom we believe we have life. And so the writer of the revelation to John declares that he heard a voice, a loud voice that is, from the throne of God saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. As Christians, we live daily on the understanding that God is with us. Yet even as we express that and may share that with each other, we still live in, into the understanding that who God is and what God does in our presence is at points still a mystery. For many of us, as we respond and relate to each other, and even as we respond and relate to God, 
we would love to be able to give answers. For example, I was involved in an interesting conversation this, this afternoon where we're, we're, we're talking about Wilbert and one of the persons who are involved in the conversation just simply came out and asked, why did he die? You know, and the, and, and the way it was expressed was really, really, really interesting. That is a question we can't answer. Only God can. And the reality is that if we were able to answer, we would become God. And so there's just some things that we have to leave in God's hands. Yet we live into the realization that from the moment we ourselves were born, you know, and some of us do live as if we are going to be here forever. But you know that's not possible. From the moment we were born, we began to journey to our own death. And whether that comes at 50, 70, or 90, you and I know very well is left to Almighty God. But the writer to the revelation of John simply shares with us that God seeks to be God in our midst. He seeks for us to be his people's. God desires to be with us and to share life with us. And then you may ask, but why? Why would God desire to be with us? And on an occasion such as this, the writer tells us why. He says, he will wipe every tear from your eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. That's part of the foundation of our faith as Christians. Living into the understanding that God didn't make us to be crying at the death of a loved one. God made us to live forever and is, and is now seeking to come and to dwell and to be with us. Our God it is who now seeks to wipe every tear from our eyes. Our God it is who seeks to remind us that the day will come when death will be no more. There will no longer be necessary for us to mourn and to cry and to feel the level of pain that we experience on this side of the grave. And we live into that understanding because God is who he says he is. And then the writer, the writer of the book of the Revelation then says to the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. I will be their God, and they will be my children. But in order for that to happen, as we live into this narrative, the important thing that it is expressing to us is that you and I have the responsibility in the meanwhile of nurturing the relationship that we have with God in Jesus Christ. You are not going to be called, and this is my understanding of scriptures, you are not going to be called a child of God if you stay far from God. 
you'll be called a child of God. You'll be given spring from the water of life if you draw close to God and live into a relationship with God in Jesus Christ. And so there's that point at which, even in the context of this funeral service, where we need to recognize that, yes, we will pray for the repose of the soul of our brother. We will commend him to the care and the keeping of Almighty God. But we also need to take time to pray for ourselves. To talk about the relationship that still exists between ourselves and God. To seek in every way possible, even in the face of death, to strengthen that relationship so that we too can drink from the spring of the water of life. We too can live into such a relationship with God that there will be no question about it at all. That God will indeed be our God and we will be his children. And so tonight, we once again take time to say thank you, God, for Wilbert Weston Joseph. We say thank you, God, for the way he lived, for the way he interacted with us, for the way he impacted us, from his generosity of spirit, from his gift of love, in our midst. We place him firmly in God's loving arms. And then we leave, we leave the sanctuary this night praying for ourselves that God in Christ will continue to open those loving arms of his and to enfold us with his love so that we too can be called God's children. Amen. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us now proclaim our faith as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our brother Wilbert, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Wilbert and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. 
Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother Wilbert. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Wilbert, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his debt may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for Wilbert and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
now commend the soul of our brother to the care and keeping of Almighty God. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Wilbert with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, Wilbert, with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Wilbert. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. That you will shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God rest in peace. Amen. Please bow your heads as we pray for God's blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in God's sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with you all this night, now, and forevermore. Amen. Two notes from me, friends. One, I believe the family has prepared a repast for you in our golden hall. You can access the hall by going through the doors on my right and going down the steps uh, to the hall. And certainly for those who um, are not able to use the steps, we have an elevator that you can go, that you can use to get to the hall as you continue to share fellowship with each other. And then tomorrow morning, I believe at 9.30, 9.30, uh, we will gather at the funeral home on Utica Avenue, and after brief furs, we will then journey uh, to Pine Lawn uh, Cemetery. When you do leave St. Gabriel's this night, I wish for you a safe journey home. My sisters and my brothers in Christ, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. For him, when the roll is called up yonder,
Master. 